Kelly Shackelford, wonderful to have you on American Thought Leaders. Oh, great to be on. So Kelly, you know, not too long ago, you won a landmark, landmark decision in the Supreme Court, um, you know, with li religious liberty being at the center of it. Can you tell us more. Well, it's a case that a lot of people in the United States have heard about. Uh, yes. It's kind of one of the more watched cases of the term. It's uh, the Bladensburg Cross. It's a veterans memorial that was put up almost 100 years ago by mothers who lost their sons in World War I. It was to remember the 49 young men in Prince George's County, Maryland, which is right outside of D.C., who died in World War I. And it was a, a lone cross. If you look at World War I memorials, they tend to be this cross because it was a brutal war, 14 million dead. I mean, and the pictures people in the United States were getting was just, they, they were dying so fast that they were just slapping crosses and stars of David on people. And you could just see row after row after row as far as the eye could see. And so that became a symbol that got used all around the world, really. So they put that symbol up and they had the people's names. And it was on private property. The American Legion even helped finish it. And it was on private property. But what happened is, it's right outside of D.C., so they built roads around it. When they did, the government took over the land to control the roads and the safety, but they still didn't want to harm a memorial. Go another 30 or 40 years, now the American humanists go, hey, wait, there's a cross and it's on government land. And so they filed a lawsuit saying that it violated our establishment clause. Right. Um, and we wanted the district court. At the Court of Appeals, shockingly, not only did we not win, one of the judges said, I think we should just cut the arms off the cross because that way we won't have to destroy it, but it won't offend anybody. Uh, so we had a mindset that was just uh, shocking. We went to the Supreme Court and we said, look, if, if you don't reverse this, not only is, is this horrible for this memorial and all the families involved with their descendants' names on the memorial, but Arlington National Cemetery is just two miles away. And there are large freestanding crosses there. You're going to have to go there and tear those down. And it's going to start a religious cleansing. You're going to go into every community of every state of this country because there's religious symbols in all these communities. Sure. And, uh, and so instead of just sort of saying, just defend this cross, we felt like these attacks on memorials and religious monuments and things that are a part of our history really is not what the founders ever intended. And it all stems back from a case 50 years ago called the Lemon case. Right. So we asked the court, we said, this needs to stop. You need to get, you need to reverse Lemon. You need to throw Lemon out because it's leading to all these attacks and this hostility to religion. And we got a victory upholding the, the Veterans Memorial just right. three weeks ago. Right. Uh, but even more important to us is Lemon was just, savaged. I mean, they six different justices said it was horrible. We're not going to apply it. And in my opinion, Lemon is dead, which if that's true, that is a major shift for our country. The 50 years of hostility to religion, whether it's a nativity scene or menorah or whatever, right. is over and we're going in a whole new direction in the future. No, that's that's very powerful, uh, you know, powerful shift. And it, of yes. course, it was covered, you know, extensively. Uh, in the media, we, we we covered here at the covered it here at the Epic Times. So, um, how is it that you kind of came upon this case in the first place? And because you, you this isn't the only case you take on. This is kind of what you guys do, right? Is yeah. cases like this? Well, you know, it started back many years ago when um, there was a case going to the Supreme Court. It was a Ten Commandments case, okay, where they were trying to say you had to tear down this Ten Commandments that's been up for however many years, and we thought, okay, we're, we were going to file what's called an amicus brief, meaning we're going to try to influence the case even though it wasn't our case because it affects a lot of our clients. Right. And we thought, who would be the best client? And we started thinking, we thought, you know, if they start tearing down the Ten Commandments monuments, there's a lot of veterans memorials that have religious symbols. Right. And so we picked up the phone and called the American Legion and sat down with them and said, you know, you, I'm sure you're not thinking about this, but these cases could really affect you. Right. And they were like, oh my gosh, you're right. And it wasn't short thereafter, we started seeing attacks against veterans from wars. Right. And so that started, and what's funny is, if you look at that first brief, like, I don't know, 10 years ago, or however many years ago it was, right. that we filed in the Supreme Court, 
examples of memorials we said that could be a danger. One of them was the Bladensburg Cross. Ah. So we... You're you already know, looking at it. Yeah, we, we, I mean, that was luck, but we showed them the kind of memorials, all because you'd have to go in the Supreme Court and rip Moses. You know, Moses is there with the Ten Commandments, right? right. Uh, it's religious, you know, this country has a religious heritage. There are a lot of religious people. Sure. So when you look at monuments and memorials, you'll see secular ones and religious ones. And the idea that we have to go and tear down all the religious ones is... It's not neutrality, it's hostility to religion. And so we finally, I think, after Bladensburg, have turned the corner on stopping the hostility. And I think this is just the beginning. I think this is gonna affect a lot more than just monuments and memorials. Um, and, uh, and we're gonna see some really good uh, advances for religious freedom for all Americans. That's, that's incredible. So First Liberty Institute, incredible work you guys are doing. Uh, FirstLiberty.org, is right. that right? They spell uh, it out, in case, anyone, in case anyone wants to check it out. So, so tell us a little more about what you are working on right now, some things that would be you know, of interest to, to freedom-loving Americans. Well, I mean, I think the, the attacks that we've been having to defend in the military have been something that's disturbed a lot of people. Okay. Um, we've had a lot of chaplains we've had to defend. I mean, chaplains that are being attacked for being chaplains, uh, right. for using the Bible and answering a question and things that chaplains are supposed to do. Um, fortunately, we've been able to win every single one of these cases, but these have been really difficult for the pastors, I mean, uh, the chaplains, because if you're in the military and they come after you, your career's over and it's a hierarchical, you know, structure. Yes. yes. And so everything that you've done your entire career is about to be gone. Your pension, everything in our, in our cases. Right. In every case, by the time we were done, we won, we won a reversal. They got their pension back, everything. But these attacks against people of faith in the military really should not occur. If you go back to the history of our military, George Washington, one of the first things he did is give everybody a Bible and establish chaplains. Because he understood how important religious freedom is to those, not everybody, but most people. And there was even a brief filed in one of our cases at the Supreme Court where the generals filed a brief saying, we found the number one reason that people apply for the military is out of their faith. Oh, that's and interesting. And they said, not only that, it's the number one thing they rely upon. And so it's crucial that they have religious freedom. And so these cases have been really important and we keep having to fight them because there's a, a political correctness or something in the military that is trying to and there are outside groups, too, that are attacking, trying to push, you know, the religious freedom that are, are, are these are people who are giving it all. Right. The idea that we would take away their religious freedom when they're sacrificing so much and when that's what they need, I think is a, a travesty, would be a travesty. The good news is we're winning case after case after case. Here. The other area I would say that's really disturbing that we have cases in that's new is senior living facilities. So many people end up in these senior living facilities in their latter years. And a lot of these people can't leave. They're, they're, they're not in the right health to leave or whatever. Right. And they're being told that they can't have a Bible study. They can't, they can't get together and, and talk about religion. Really? Yeah. It, it, we're having case after case after case. We've got one where they literally put a sign on the piano in the common room saying, all Christian, this is in bold letters, all Christian music is banned. Now, people look at the sign and they think, oh, come on, you attorneys did the sign, right? We're like, no, we didn't do the sign. This is what the building did to these seniors. The guy, one of the, the cases we're representing right now is an 80-year-old minister who is in one of these senior living facilities. And a lot of people there said, look, I can't get out. Uh, I'm in a wheelchair. I'm in a situation. Would you be willing to do a Bible study so that I can have some religious you know, input during the week? He said, I'd be happy to. We have a common area room, everybody can use it. He put in to use it and they said, you can use it, but not if you're gonna study the Bible. And he was kind of shocked, but he thought, well, okay, I'll, I'll just do it in my apartment. He has now received a letter telling him he will be evicted if he holds a Bible study in his apartment. But, but this isn't like they're trying to force people to participate in this. No. This is just, he's simply doing that. They want a religion-free building, but this is, this is where people live. And, and that's housing discrimination. You can't come in 
and tell people in their, you know, in the, the, where they live, a they can't practice building? their religion. Is that why they feel some they can of, do this? Some of them are yeah. government, and and again, that's even more of a violation because it not only violates housing laws that apply to private groups, but it violates the Constitution. Right. Um, but some of them are private. Some of it. Some of them are government. And uh, we had one. We had to. I don't know. I think there were maybe 85 year old women in one of their living facilities, a government facility, and kids were coming through around Christmas. And they started reading the Charlie Brown Christmas story to the kids. And a government official jumped in when they realized that part of that is they get to where Linus reads a little bit of scripture and they shut the thing down and move the kids out and told the ladies never to do that again. And this is their home, you know, and they can't talk about their faith. These are clear violations of the law, but we've got to fight for this because I bet everybody listening to this has somebody they know that's in one of these facilities. Right family member, friend, a lot of us one day might be. We have got to preserve religious freedom in the place where people live, especially when they can't even get out. That, that's especially cruel, I think, to tell people they'll never have any access to religion for the rest of their lives with other people. That, that, that's very cruel, and it's not the law, and so it's a really disturbing sort of trend we're seeing, cases all over the country but we plan to win those cases and set a precedent where hopefully we can put an end to it. Well, and I know that you're a Christian-based organization, but you're actually representing anyone who is seeking yep. their constitutionally... We represent all rights. faiths. Uh, we, we have Jewish synagogues we're representing all over the country that are being attacked. Um, it's really sad, but uh, we're winning those cases, but we're having to defend a lot of people. So the way everybody needs to understand it is whatever your religion you want religious freedom so you can practice yours. And if you're not willing to stand for people with different beliefs, then everybody will lose their religious freedom. So we represent all faiths and always have and always will because that's what this country was built upon, religious freedom. That's a great place to end. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you.